Hey, hey, Tony Gaskins here. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Talks with Tony. You know, got a long one now, so you bear with me today. This is a long question. Um, thank you for sending it in. It says, hi, Tony. I hope you are doing well and, and I really enjoy watching your videos and hearing your advice. I have a question and hope you can help. Thank you so much. I've been dating a guy for seven months. I'm 30 and he's 31. We met online. He was in the process of moving here and immediately started going on dates when he got here. Everything was great in the beginning, as it always is, and he said all the right things, including the fact that he was dating with the purpose of finding a wife. He took me out several places, restaurants, parks, to see fireworks, etc and talked to me for hours on the phone. Then a few months in, I asked him where he thought things were going and he said that he liked me but was also dating other women, some of whom he felt a spark with and was really interested in. I fell back and he began to pursue me more. Then he said he had narrowed it down between me and one other woman, which sounds terrible. He spent so much time with me and started spending the night with me going out places again and eventually said we were dating exclusively and he had cut the other woman off. But even with dating exclusively, he said he's not ready for a relationship because he needs to know he's going to marry someone. He needs to know he's going to marry someone before making that kind of commitment. And he's used to dating lots of women at one time and does not trust himself. After more after more time, his efforts started to fall off, and I would tell him that we need to spend more time together outside of the house, and I needed consistency and honest communication to continue. He kept saying he would do more and would for a little, but always revert back to very little effort. Towards the end, he would just come over, eat, watch TV, talk for a while, and go to sleep, and almost seemed offended if spending money on me came up. But still, steady saying we're moving towards a relationship. I met some of his family and closest friends as well. His cousin slash roommate told me that he has a history of dating women to get benefits. And as soon as he has to put in real effort, he distances himself and makes up some reason as to why he isn't compatible with her. He told me I bring too much stress slash drama for what I wanted and kept saying I'm free to date other men, but I don't date multiple men at once. I think the entire time we've just had two different goals with dating and I feel like I allowed him to play me. We argued last week because he plays video games as a hobby and will do it for hours after work and all weekend. I asked him if we could spend time together and he said he would rather play the game. After the argument, I was a little out of character and showed up at his house because he just cut me off and would not talk to me about why. He also lives across the street. So I think he came over as a convenience a lot. He said this was just too much for him and he didn't want to feel tied down, nagged, or like he has to report his every move or can't do what he wants. I've never been clingy and always say it's healthy for us to have our own lives and hobbies, but I do believe relationships need balance. I am extremely busy outside of him with work, my business, hobbies, and other friends, but was making time for him. I don't understand how he could walk away and treat me like I'm just dead to him. I'm exhausted from dating men like this. It hurts and I know I probably played myself, made it too easy and ignored a lot of red flags. But if you can help me understand what may have gone through his mind, I would really appreciate it. Thank you. So you want to understand what went through his mind. Thank you. That was a long email for those who stuck with me through it. Thank you very much. Well, see, here's the thing. Um, he's 31 years old and at 31, not a lot of men know who they are, what they want, where they're going. He's also a 31 year old gamer, means he plays for hours after work and he plays all weekend, which basically equates to being a bum. And I'm sorry for offending the guys who are watching this who have those same habits. But listen to me, fellas. If the video game is not paying you, then you're playing yourself. You're wasting time. Unless you're going to get in some tournaments and win some tournaments as a gamer, you're wasting time. Because you could be pursuing your purpose. And all them hours you're spending on that game, you could be creating streams of income. 
You could be building your business. You could be focusing on your purpose. So the first thing what you have to realize, sister, is that you had a grown boy. You had a grown boy, not a grown man. The video games need to start to really slow down around 25 years old because that's when life starts to get serious. And you got to do real things with real time because you don't get that time back. And on your deathbed, you're not going to wish that you had more time on Call of Duty. You're going to wish you had more time in your purpose. So, sister, you got to realize that. The next thing, what you have to realize, this is the mistake that you made, is he told you he was dating multiple women. Anytime a man tells you he's dating multiple women, you got to put your track shoes on and you got to take off running. It is understood that a man will date multiple women. What's understood does not need to be explained. What's understood does not need to be confessed or told. When a man tells you that he's dating multiple women, that's already that's a test. Because if you stay, you a fool. Because now he says, so you're telling me you are willing to be in this horse race. In this horse race that you're willing to chase the bunny rabbit around the track. People betting on you, but you don't win nothing. All you get is tired. All you get is tired. People betting on you, meaning your friends and your family hoping you get married. But if you don't win the horse race, you get nothing. They get nothing. All you get is tired. So when he tells you I'm dating other women and you like, oh, OK, OK, cool. That's what men do. Oh, at least he honest. No. At least you playing the fool is what it is. So that's the red flag. So here's the thing. You say what's going through his mind. What's going through his mind is this what's going through his mind. Got this woman. She one of many. Tell her she fall back. Oh, maybe she classy. Maybe she got something since she's going to fall back when I tell her she's one of many and I'm used to dating many women. So I tell her this. She fall back. OK, let me pick it up because this might be a good woman. So let me pick it up. Let me show a little more time. He started to give you a little more time. Then he tells you, I've narrowed it down. You still in the race. I've narrowed it down and you still in the race. And so now here you is you hear this. That is between you and one other woman. And you're going to stay in the fight. You're going to hear this and stay in the fight. So then he say, she a slap fool. She is a slap fool. So you know what? My roommate, my cousin slash roommate. This was, he, this was going through his head. I can't trust him. I don't like him. He doesn't like me. We blood, but we not family. And I say that because it's his cousin that told you that he likes to play games with women. And when it come time for a real effort, he back off. Cuz shouldn't have never said that. Cuz had no business telling his cousin business. So the fact that cousin telling this man business, that let me know that this man know his cousin ain't worth nothing. So now this let me know. Because you live across the street, you exactly right. You are you were a woman of convenience. So what's going through his head is let me go over here to her house so I could be out of the house from around my cousin. So my cousin could think I got something going on and that I'm busy. But I'll be over here in your house. Don't want to be with you. But I'm going to sleep with you and I'm going to eat up your groceries and I'm going to play my video game over here. Get off my game. We're going to have us some sex and then I'm going to sleep. So I'm just using you for somewhere to stay and for some sex. That's what's going through his mind. And then when you go to requiring more, his addiction to that video game start to kick in. And he was like, look, I'm married to the game right now. I'm, I'm in a relationship with this game right now, and I got to spend hours a day with this game when I get off work. And then I got to spend hours all weekend with this game. So I'm married to this game. I don't have time for a relationship. I don't have time to be dealing with your nagging. 
So your standards that you're trying to put in place, it doesn't match up. It doesn't match up, doesn't add up because he's like, how are you trying to have standards? But when I told you you were one of many, you stayed. When I told you you were still in the race and I narrowed it down to you and one other woman, then you stayed. But now you're asking for more. But you already showed me that you don't know your worth. So how are you asking me for more, but you already showed me you don't know your worth? Oh, you lost. Oh, you confused. This is what he's thinking. So it doesn't make sense to him because you agreed to be a horse in the race, but then now you want to be main and exclusive and you want all this time. And he's like, this don't go together. This don't go together. You know, when I met my wife, I was talking to four other women. That did not come out of my lips. And I cut them four other women off in the first week or two because I saw that she was my wife and I became 100 percent exclusive with her. But then guess what? When I tried to impose my will, I tried to be a grown boy. I tried to be jealous. I tried to be controlling. I tried to be, you know, everything that I was toxic. She walked off on me even after we had had sex. She didn't say because I've invested all this time and I've had sex with this man, I'm going to keep dealing with him. She said, no, I'm done. Deuces. She walked off on me. So you didn't do that. You didn't do that. And he played you like a fool. And let me tell you what happened. He was able to come over your place after work and spend all this time and be on this video game all this time because the woman he had narrowed it down to with you, she realized he was full of it. And she had more self-respect than you had. And she kicked his butt to the curb. That's why he had all the time in the world for you to sit on the video game. So the thing is, is he never wanted you. After he realized that you weren't his wife, he just wanted to juggle you with the other women. But when the other women cut him off because he wasn't giving them the time and the effort that they wanted, and they cut him off. Then he had more time to sit and play his video game at your place. And you asking him for time saying we need to spend more time together. But he was like, look, I'm on this game because I don't even want you. I just want to be over here. So I'm, I don't have to be in the house with my cousin. So I know that's hard to hear, but this is a lesson for everybody listening. Pay attention to the signs. If you ride down the road and you see dead end, dead end, dead end, cliff, cliff, danger, pay attention to the signs. The moment that hit you, which you, you put in here, you said, you put in here, I fell back and he began to pursue me more. I call that human physics. When you fall back, they come closer. When you chasing, they run. So when you fell back, he came. When you told him I need more time, he took off. He give more time to the video game. You say you need more time. He on the video game. Uh -huh. You say I fell back and he began to pursue more. Then he said he had and you put in quotation mark narrowed it down between me and one other woman. And you put in parentheses, which sounds terrible. You said it. You said it which sounds terrible. You said it. Listen to me. That's your intuition trying to protect you. That is the female intuition trying to protect you. That is the sign that says dead in. That is the sign that says cliff coming ahead. You about to drive off a cliff. If you keep going straight cliff, watch out for the cliff, which sounds terrible. That is your intuition. Ladies, 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 and fellas too. Them parentheses in your life. In her email, she put in, she put in parentheses, which sounds terrible. Pay attention to the parentheses in your life. When something strikes you and it sounds terrible or it feels terrible, that's the sign you have to listen to and you cannot ignore. At that moment right there, you're supposed to say, you know what? Listen, 
listen, I don't compete for a man. I don't, I don't chase a man. I don't compete for a man. The fact that you even fix your mouth to tell me that I'm one of many or that you narrowed it down. Do I look like a, a horse in a race? Do I look like a greyhound to you? Man, get out my face. Hey, do me a favor. Get up right now. Get your stuff. Get out my face. Get out my place. Just like that right there. Y'all, y'all sit there and this you sitting there and you like. Mm. So you narrowed it down. Mm. Okay. Mm, um, mm. Okay. Okay. So this man going to spit in your face and you just going to accept it. No. At that point right there, you got to say, listen to me. And you can say it with a smile, just like this here. Hey, listen, li listen to me. Uh, get, uh, get, get all your stuff. Uh, it, yeah. Get, get your wallet off the table. Yeah. Get your shoes. Get on out my place. Get on out my place. Hey, it was good talking to you. But listen to me. I don't compete for a man. I don't compete for a man. So thank you. It was nice knowing you. I know I didn't gave you some of this good, but I got to cut my losses. I got to take that L. Get on out my place. Thank you very much. So the lesson from this is pay attention to the signs. It's not what it's not about what was going through his mind. What was going through his mind is that you don't make him better. See what you got to see. He could be exactly who he always was with you. A man wants to marry a woman that's going to push him to another level. That's going to challenge him. That's going to make him better. See, you was talking, but you weren't requiring action. He playing the video game, not spending no time with you. If he at your house playing a video game, then, or if he at his place playing a video game, let's say he would rather be at, let's say he was playing a video game at his place. At that point right there, it's like, hey, look, okay, well, do me a favor. Since you so in love with Fortnite or Call of Duty or NBA 2K, um, maybe you ought to marry the game. Do me a favor and lose my phone number, okay? Do me a favor, lose my phone number. And then he calling, 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 and he's not getting an answer. That right there is showing him. That right there is pushing him to another level. That right there is challenging him. If you don't do that, then you're showing a man that you don't know your worth, that you don't value yourself, that you don't love yourself because you're not holding him accountable to his actions and to his words. So therefore, what's going through his mind, like what you asked, what's going through his mind is this woman cannot be my wife because she does not know her worth. She does not know who she is. I'm coming in here and I'm imposing my will and I'm getting to do what I want to do, how I want to do it. I can't marry a weak woman like that. I need a woman that's going to make me better. I need a woman that's going to push me. I need a woman that's going to challenge me. If, if not, then what's the point of this? If I could just run over her and just tell her whatever I want, I, she asking me for a date and I tell her I'd rather play the video game and she cool with it. No, this woman don't know who she is. And so her insecurity is going to drive me crazy because she don't have enough strength to know who she is and to stand her ground and speak her ground and hold her own. So even if he cannot articulate it like that, that's what his action showed you when y'all parted ways. That's what he was basically showing you. So ladies, understand this. I know it sounds unfair. I know it sounds unfair and you like, well, why I got to do all that and why I got to do all that and why he want me to make him better instead of him just becoming better. It ain't my job to make him better. It ain't my job. Hey, a lot of stuff ain't fair. A lot of stuff don't make sense. But what you have to realize as a woman is you are the igniter. You are the, the catalyst. A good man becomes a great man due to the woman in his life. Men don't become great on their own. Men may become good. Men may be exceptional, but a good man becomes a great man from his relationship. Having an accountability partner that's going to hold him accountable and that's going to push him to the next level. And if you're not doing that, guess what? He's going to stay the same. He's going he gonna to cut corners. He's going to take shortcuts. So, hey, get that in your spirit. I know it's hard to swallow. I know it's hard to hear because it feels like it's too much responsibility on you. But it's not about... And this is what I want you to understand. This is what I want you to understand. It's not about you holding him accountable. 
It's about you holding yourself accountable. By you holding yourself accountable and saying, look, I don't play those games. I don't deal with that. I'm not selling for that. That is what holds him accountable and pushes him into greatness. So, hey, thank you so much for tuning in. If you have a question for me, send it to inbox at TonyGaskins.com, inbox at TonyGaskins.com. We will be in touch.